Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about a brand new feature from AWS Lambda called Event Filtering. I'm super excited about this feature and I'm excited to tell you how it's going to make setup and configuration for event processing applications that much easier. So in this video I'll talk about how event filtering works and walk you through an example to showcase why it's such a game changer. Now this is going to be a two-part video series. In part two I'll walk you through how to set event filtering up in the AWS console. So let's just jump right into it. And first of all, I want to talk just briefly about what is Lambda Event Filtering. So this was a brand new announcement that just came out of reInvent 2021, and it allows you as a Lambda application owner to selectively control which events get delivered to your Lambda function. So in an event processing application, we may have a variety of different event sources, and sometimes we only want to process a subset of those events based on the payload of the event that's getting sent to us. So for example, if we have an e-commerce application that publishes purchase events and refund events for orders, maybe we have a use case where we only want to process purchase events and not receive events where we have refunds. So that's where this type of feature comes in. It allows you to control which events based on the payload get delivered to your function. Now using this new feature, the function owner will define something that is called filter rules on the type of events that it is interested in processing. So you define filter rules that get attached to your subscription where you specify what types of events based on the content of the messages that you want to receive in your Lambda function. Now using filter rules, there are a diverse set of them, including text matching, numeric ranges, begins with, and or logic, and a whole bunch of other ones. Now this allows you to develop some very comprehensive rules that are really gonna help you narrow down what type of events you want delivered. So for example, you can match by a text field and then maybe there's another field that contains a numeric value and you only want events that are over a certain numeric value. So that's one scenario, but I'll walk you through a more comprehensive example in an upcoming slide here. Now, a cool feature about using event filtering is that Lambda will automatically discard non-matching events that don't conform to the filter rules that you specify. And this costs you nothing at all. Behind the scenes, your Lambda never gets invoked if the message payload does not conform to what you specify in the filter rules. Now, as of today, there's only three different event sources that are supported, but they are the most popular ones in my opinion. So SQS, which is typically used with Lambda. Also DynamoDB Streams is supported, which is very useful for capturing event level changes on your DynamoDB table. I have a whole video on that if you're interested in learning more. And Kinesis is also supported, which is typically used for massive data ingestion and processing. So currently these three event sources are supported, but I expect this to grow over time as the feature gets more mature. All right, so that's a brief introduction to what event filtering is. Now, this may not seem like a big deal at face value in terms of why this is useful, but I assure you this is a very, very useful feature. And I wanna walk you through an example now to help demonstrate why. So first of all, I wanna talk about an example before event filtering to show you what we used to have to do to achieve what event filtering allows us to do now. Now in this example, say that we have two different AWS accounts. On the left-hand side, we have a data owner AWS account. So they're the owner of the data or the publisher of the data. And on the right-hand side, you have our AWS account. So it's a consumer AWS account that is interested in processing that data. So in this setup, we have an SNS topic, which is gonna be used for publishing messages. And the types of messages that this SNS topic publishes are in terms of e-commerce. So you can see here, I have two examples of two types of messages. So we have an order that is of type purchase. Uh, we have an order ID, we have an amount, we have a customer ID, and we have a destination address. Now on the right-hand side, you see it's pretty similar as well, except that we have an order type of refund. So two different types here, purchase and refund, and the rest of the characteristics are the same. Now over on the right hand side, we are interested in consuming these notifications. We want to process these events. So a very typical setup in this type of architecture would be you'd have a queue uh, where you get your SNS messages delivered to, and then you'd have a Lambda function. And you can see based on the name, I'm kind of hinting at the intent of this function. Now this Lambda function only wants to process purchase events. It does not care about refund events. So typically how you would set this up is that you'd create your function, you'd create your queue, you'd wire these two things together based on a subscription, and then you'd subscribe your SNS topic to that queue. Now using this configuration, every message that gets published to this SNS topic is going to be delivered to the queue, and it's gonna be invoking that Lambda function. 
But if you notice, we have two specific types of orders. We have a purchase and a refund. And this Lambda function only cares about purchases. So this brings us to our first option, and that's dropping messages. This is the way that we used to have to do it many years ago before the other option existed, which is the second one I'm going to be talking about. But basically, in the first line of our Lambda function, we would say, is the event type of the message a purchase? If yes, proceed. If it's any other type, in this case refund, ignore the message and just return. Now, if you have a event composition of say, maybe 80% purchases and 20% refunds that are being pumped through this SNS topic, you're gonna to be invoking your function 20% of the time using a no op or a no operation. You're basically gonna be invoking your function, it's gonna immediately return and it's a complete waste of money because as we all know, Lambda functions cost money based on the number of times we invoke them. Now this kind of sucked in the past because you're basically just burning your money in a fire and you really have no other option to control the event flow and to filter the types of messages that you actually want in your use case. So this was definitely bad, but it was the only way to do it for a long, long time. So that was option one. Now, a couple years after that, option two came along, and that's something called a SNS subscription filter. Now, what this option required, now this was a little bit better, uh, but what this option required us to do was that on the data owner account or the SNS owner account, we'd have to ask them to set up what is called a filter policy. And in this case, it's a purchase filter. Now, how this works is that the topic owner would have to create a filter that looks at the order type field and will only publish messages to a certain subscriber when the order type matches the criteria of the filter. So in this case, we would have to set up a purchase filter where we would only want the orders that contain purchase. And whenever a message gets published into the topic, it would first run through this filter. It would see that the payload of this event contains the order type purchase, and therefore it would send that message to the queue, and then the queue would send that message to the Lambda function, and then we're good to go. So using this approach, like this would definitely work. If a refund gets pushed to the topic now, it would run through the filter. The filter would see, hey, it's not a purchase, so it would not send that message to the queue. Now this was certainly all well and good, and this was a big improvement over option one. However, it had a really big problem. And the problem was the fact that you as the consumer would need to go and ask the data owner or the SNS topic owner to please add an event filter for my use case. Now, if you work in an organization with a lot of consumers, so you have a lot of people over here on the right-hand side that are interested in consuming notifications, and you have one team on the left-hand side that is the owner of this topic, this can very easily get overwhelming for the folks that own this SNS topic. And in addition, it's not just as easy as a configuration change to add this thing. The owner over here needs to make a code change to start saying this message that I am publishing has a certain field that's going to be used for that filter, which is order type in this case. So it wasn't that easy to set up. And as you can imagine, there's so many folks that can exist on the right hand side of this equation that may want a different type of filter that is specific to their use case. So this was very quickly becoming a bottleneck. I know from experience, I was on this hand side for a long time where I had to set up filters for some very specific use cases. And it was just a waste of time from my perspective, although it was valuable for the client over on the right hand side. So again, this was an improvement, but not quite ideal because it required too much effort on this side of the equation when really the work should have been done on this side of the equation. So this brings us nicely into the new option, which is using event filtering. So this one now is with event filtering. And how this one works is that we no longer have that SNS filter. We just have the normal subscription as we saw in the first example. So we have all the messages that are being sent to the SNS topic. Uh, they're gonna be going directly to that queue. And now instead, when we wire together our Lambda function to our queue that it currently contains all of the messages, both purchases and refunds, we can now specify an event filter. And this is very close to what that event filter looks like. You just specify the field that you are interested in extracting and the value that you want to be delivered to your Lambda function. So because we have this message type over here where the order type is purchase, we define a event filter over on the right hand side here where we're only interested in order type purchase. And as a result, only the messages that are delivered to the queue now that are of type purchase 
will ever get invoked by this Lambda function. Now this is a huge improvement because now this is much, much simpler for the left hand side. All they have to do is set up a subscription, which is typically very, very easy to do. There's no code changes that they need to do to support this person's use case over on the right hand side. And the consumer on the right hand side can change their event rules at any time without the data owner ever having to know. So this is a very huge improvement from a separation of concerns perspective. And it really just smooths out the process of configuration and getting the event types that you want delivered to your Lambda function. So that's what this new feature is all about and why it's so useful. So I briefly wanted to talk about some of the details in terms of the event syntax and the types of rules that you need to write to extract the events that you're interested in receiving. So this is a table that I pulled off the AWS documentation website. And these are all the comparison operators that you can utilize. Then you have examples in the center and an example of the rule syntax over on the right hand side. So you can see all the different types of comparison operators. So you have null, empty, equals, and, or, not, numeric equals, numeric range, exists, does not exist, begins with. So there's a whole slew of them. So this allows you to develop some pretty comprehensive rules. So in that previous example, say we cared only about purchases, we would use equals with per order type here, purchase. And maybe in addition, we only wanted events where the order amount is greater than, I don't know, $100. So we can combine those two things to say, order type purchase and numeric range. And then you can see the syntax over here. You have to do numeric is greater than or equal to is what this would be, and then 50. So you can combine all of these things together. You can do ands or ors, and you can create some very sophisticated rule sets to really hone in to the types of events that you want delivered to your function. So in part two of this series, I'm going to walk you through how to do this in the AWS console. So stay tuned for that. I'll put it on the right hand side when it's available. In the meantime, check out these other videos on AWS Lambda, and I'll see you next time.